The past few years have seen a craze of 80s cartoon revivals and She-Ra is the latest example. She-Ra The Princesses of Power is based on the original show but packs a lot more action and intrigue. Almost every character has gotten a complete design overhaul, their personalities and relationships are more defined and the villains are more important. In the original She-Ra, Shadow Weaver was more of a background villain. But in the reboot, Shadow Weaver and Adora's relationship is as mysterious as Shadow Weaver's real identity. Mara, the former She-Ra, is another character character shrouded in mystery. All we know is that she got cast out when her powers grew too strong. Hmm, that doesn't sound too different from Shadow Weaver's story. Is there some kind of connection between these two? Are Shadow Weaver and Mara the same person? Ah yes, Shadow Weaver. A favorite creepy, demonic and unstable control freak with a weird habit of touching Adora's face. She was the one responsible for raising both Adora and Katra, so she's closely entwined with them both. It's up for debate whether she was the one that caused the relationship to ultimately fall apart, but rest assured she was never buddy-buddy with anyone else in the show. Even though this theory is about Shira's reboot, let's try and make some connections about Shadow Weaver from the original show. We probably won't find a real identity since we don't yet know just how much the reboot will change the original original plotline, but hey, it's a good starting point. We already know that Shadow Weaver was originally a sorceress from the Kingdom of Mystic War called Lightspinner. She was raised by the magician Norwin alongside a rival sorceress called Caster Speller. Lightspinner was later convinced to join the Horde under Hordeg, but when Norwin discovered her betrayal, he destroyed the gem Lightspinner used to boost her powers, forever changing her personality and appearance in the process. Thus, Shadow Weaver was born. In the meantime, her rather Caster Speller was dethroned as Queen of Mystic War by Mortella and forced to live in the woods. Shadow Weaver, on the other hand, would secure a prominent role as second in command of the Horde. Now I don't know if you noticed, but there were some pretty striking similarities between Shadow Weavers and Adora and Catra's upbringing. They were all raised by a powerful magic user, also one was promised great power in exchange for information when the other one had trouble trying to gain it. Sure, Adora and Catra grew up a lot less sheltered than Lightspin and Caster Spella, but the similarities would explain why Shadow Weaver was this easily convinced to join the dark side just like Catra. And what about Mara? How is it that the only she other than Adora was only mentioned in one episode? Episode. Even an all-knowing entity like Lightope doesn't like talking about her. The only reason Lightope even brought her up is to show Adora why she shouldn't grow too attached to the people around her and focus on her powers. Mara ignored that advice, causing her to give in to fear and faulty reasoning, whatever that means. Supposedly, she caused the destruction of the entire kingdom and then stranded them in the empty dimension Despondos. We haven't learned much about that place in the Shira reboot just yet, but in He-Man Masters of the Universe, Despondos was the place Hordak could summon any time he wanted to vanquish his enemies. So it's actually pretty significant that Mara got them stranded in the dimension that is used to beat down bad guys. It also doesn't explain where Mara ended up after all of this. Lightop could have meant that Mara's actions caused the entire kingdom of Grayskull, just her warriors, or just Mara herself to get stranded in Espondos. And also, why has no one brought her up after all of that? Is she dead? And how did everyone else get out of there? But as far as a connection to Shadow Weaver, there are already some cracks opening up. For example, how is Mara both a sorceress under Darwin and the latest incarnation of Shira? I don't want to imply that there's different versions of Shira and different multiverses or something, let's just keep things simple for now. For the sake of this theory, let's assume that Shadow Weaver's backstory from the original is defunct, it just doesn't exist. With a new role, Despondos changes, and even though Lightspinner hasn't been mentioned in the reboot, that doesn't put an end to this theory just yet. In fact, it's about to get even wilder. Have you ever wondered why Shadow Weaver wants to have Adora, of all people, on her side? Sure, she's a great warrior and all, but why her specifically? Up until that point, Adora had no idea she was the new incarnation of She-Ra. But more often than not, Shadow Weaver would use Hordak as an excuse to track Adora's progress and keep her on her side. She might have tried to keep Adora's powers in check, in order for her not to turn against the Horde. Adora wasn't even allowed to have a team beside her on her first real mission, which might have been part of Shadow Weaver's scheme to use her yet again. Use her for what, you ask? To finally overthrow the new incarnation and become She-Ra yet again. That would also explain why Lightop didn't want Adora to find out more about Mara, because she feared that might be too much for Adora to take at once. Or maybe Shadow Weaver hid her identity so well that even Lightop didn't know about it. It's unlikely that Shadow Weaver just forgot she used to be Mara. On the other hand, some fans speculate that the hand gesture Shadow Weaver uses on Adora actually has some mind erasing powers. If that's the case, it would make her weird fascination with Adora all the more bizarre. When Shadow Weaver's face was first about to be revealed, she made dead sure no one was actually able to see it. Somehow I think this goes beyond just trying to protect her privacy. Sure, maybe Hordak actually saw power 
powers in Shadow Weaver, and that is why he tasked her with taking care of Adora. But don't you think it's odd that Shadow Weaver makes such a big fuss about hiding her mysterious identity like that? Even though she collaborated with Catra knowing Adora or Shira, Shadow Weaver never told Catra about her real intentions. Bordek didn't really do much in this season anyway, so it's entirely plausible that Shadow Weaver was just using Catra as an excuse to get Adora on her side. Admittedly, she did a poor job. There is one more detail about Mara and Shadow Weaver I haven't mentioned. Their designs. Have you ever considered that Shadow Weaver is the only character whose hair is in motion all the time? You may think that this is just to show that her powers are active all the time, but then you look at the flashback of Mara and then you realize, oh my god! Her hair is in motion too. Okay, yes, I guess Adora's hair is also moving when she is in Shira form, but with the determination in her eyes, it makes me think that this might be what happens when you get on Mara's bad side. Now we've done a lot of truth twisting for this theory to make sense, we're being picky with a ton of old lore. Though limited, Shadow Weaver's original backstory could poke some holes in this theory. Still, it seems too logical to just pass off. Adora and Catra's relationship is similar to Lightspin and Caster's Bellows, but that parallel has its caveats. The theory would only work if there was some additional event that caused Lightspinner and that incarnation of Shira to be the same person, but for the time being that seems unlikely. Let's go back to Mara having a pulse destroyed by crash landing onto Despondos. Either she loses her memory and becomes a slave to Hordak, or she tries to use him to get back at Adora and regain her position as Shira. I think the latter is more likely because it aligns with the new identity she has set up for herself as the Shadow Weaver, because she's weaving the shadows of the past to work in her favor, manipulating the new Shira, and getting revenge on Hordak. Catra serves more as a means to an end in this situation. In the beginning, Shadow Weaver was trying to break Adora and Catra apart to get closer to Adora, but as soon as she realized she could use Catra as a decoy, Shadow Weaver used brute force to try and regain powers in Instead. With that, she would prove everything Lighthouse told us about her. She grows too attached to her own plans and only cares about herself and her inner circle. Well, okay, in this case she really only cares about herself, but I'm sure even Shadow Weaver used to have people close to her. It would seem like Adora and Shadow Weaver's relationship is already destroyed beyond repair, but it's only a matter of time until we see something similar happen to Adora and Catra's relationship. In fact, we might actually see something like a redemption arc between the two as Adora finds out about Shadow Weaver's past. Who knows, maybe Shadow Weaver and Adora will even team up to fight Hordak and Catra. Maybe Skeletor will also come in to serve up some Fortnite dances. Sounds just as plausible to me. If you haven't guessed yet, much of this theory is just wishful thinking and a lot of speculation. Honestly, there just isn't much to grasp in terms of evidence for Mara's past. But if she didn't have any purpose in the series lore, Lighto wouldn't even have brought her up. Heck, she might as well have brought up Shadow Weaver. In the original series lore, Shadow Weaver's upbringing would serve an example just as well as Mara's. It really depends on whether the show wants to set off into an entirely new direction with this character. Some people might be against it, but I'm still hopeful the show will serve up plenty of good drama. As far as plausible Abilities, the relationship between the characters are still all in their baby shoes. We have to wait and see if this one is really worth focusing on. So for now, I'm giving this theory one laughing Skeletor out of five. But what do you think? Could Mara and Shadow Weaver be two characters woven into one? Heh. <laughs> woven. And if you think Shadow Weaver, or Mara for that matter, will turn out to be someone else entirely, let us know who you think it is. And if you like this theory, let us know with a thumbs up and subscribe for more Cartoon Conspiracy. My name is Cosmo and don't forget, Friday loves you.